This is the second talk about gender and polarity. So we touched on how the terms often used from modern psychology for these aspects of consciousness, self-consciousness for waking consciousness, subconsciousness for the unconscious. Now human consciousness has been rightly likened to an iceberg, meaning that the self-conscious mind, our waking mind, that deals with the world as we perceive it and the situations we find ourselves in and identifying things, is like the top of an iceberg. And as you may have heard, the visible part of an iceberg is only one-eighth of the iceberg's mass. Seven-eighths of it are beneath the surface of the waters, and this is likened to the subconscious mind. The vast amount of consciousness is subconscious. Of course, in occultism, we understand this more in as much as we know that the subconscious doesn't just deal with the unconscious experience. Remember, the subconscious mind remembers everything. Nowadays, if you're listening to these words and you speak English, you don't have to analyse putting these various sounds together and then defining that as a word and then as its associated meaning. It's it's all that was all done during your education and most of education is to do with memorization you learn to remember it you don't have to analyze the shapes of the letters in each single word anymore you, you read it second nature because the subconscious has memorized it the the memory capacity of the subconscious is vast and it doesn't just confine itself to this this life. Occult um, experimentation has shown that it also holds the memory of previous existences too. And at a certain point it also unites with the superconscious, but that's beyond what we're talking about today. So the subconscious is vast. Now, in the last talk, I mentioned about how often the image of the feminine was used for the subconscious, simply because of the amount of time spent by most women in older society. But there's another reason for this symbolism. I stress again, it's only symbolism, it's not literal. But the other reason for this symbolism is that the subconscious gives birth to other things. In occultism we use this to a very high degree that if you make suggestions to the subconscious often enough in its own language, that being the language of images, the subconscious will produce thought forms. And taking to an even stronger level, if that's what's intended, the thought form in turn, the subconscious will then bring about the material result. This is why occultists like Eliphas Levy called it subconscious, he called it the magical agent, because it is the agency by which the results of magic are brought into results. All the rest of magic, the paraphernalia, the ritual, the invocations, are all stimuli to the subconscious mind. Ritual speaks in the language of subconscious through action, through mime, through colour, through associated symbol, symbolism, and then skillfully uses it to bring about the result itself. So I repeat what I said in the earlier one is subconsciousness and self-consciousness 
uh, nothing to do with being a physical, biological male or female. All human beings contain those. And this idea was also the basis in the ancient mysteries when it came to pantheons of gods and goddesses. Gods and goddesses aren't human beings. They represent either cosmic powers or powers that are very strong within this particular planet such as seasons or elements. But the greater cosmic gods are even beyond that when you're dealing with, with suns and stars and galaxies. And the subconscious has access to these and has an understanding of the symbolism that's used. And so in the ancient mysteries this, all the powers of the subconscious were thought of as, well, I, I hesitate to even say thought of. They weren't silly. You know, they were identified under the label of feminine, purely like a filing cabinet. The goddesses are those powers of the subconscious written large both in the macrocosm and in the microcosm. In other words, to put it bluntly, goddesses never were and never will be women. It's a label. Men will never be gods. And the gods of the ancient world weren't men. It was the label of what that power did. Now, if one has a very romantic streak about this, of course that sounds very kind of disappointing. What I have news for you is actually more exciting in another way. So, for example, unlike what the uninitiated think, it's perfectly possible and is done in the big mystery schools that in certain rituals, although the ritual officer may be wearing, may be incarnate in a male body, for a particular ritual, the, the power of the cosmic feminine is being invoked upon that that officer. And in the same way, a, a officer who happens to be an incarnate in a, feet, in a woman's body can, and most effectively, take on, allow the god form of a male god to find um, access through their, through their agency for the purposes of the ritual. I can think of several um, uh, very effective you know, magicians who were able to very effectively do this. And this had nothing to do with sexual orientation. It had nothing to do with personal bias. It had to do with the science of knowing how to access a God form, how to relate to it, and then how to effectively channel it, so to speak, for the purposes, purposes of the ritual. And this has further connotations too, when you think of that gods and goddesses as they were in the mystery religions, or even today in living religions, as in Hinduism, it, in Tibetan Buddhism, where the various enlightened aspects of Buddha mind are represented, only represented, not slavishly believed, represented by male or female figures according to need. And this is where the knowledge is so important because if you need to bring something about then you will go for, deliberately go for, a subconscious aspect of power and so you will go down your tables and find which would be the appropriate goddess for this. And by reverse, the male gods to bring about another kind of result. So behind me here you can see there's a Tibetan tanker. You can't see it probably very well. It shows one of the Tibetan Buddhist deities 
in fierce form. <clears throat> it is of a feminine deity, what they would call a Dakini. And in Tibetan practice, if a student has a particular problem or issue or has reached a certain stage on the path, then they will work with the female form and that will in and to make that form alive to let the microcosmic little image of the deity become plugged into the cosmic aspect and thus bring about the flow of energy and the resulting um, flowering of uh, the superconscious mind, they will work with the female form by meditating daily upon the deity and then becoming the Dakini, becoming the goddess. So this isn't like outer religion where worshippers just have, oh there's a god, let's worship the god. That's fine, that's warm up, that's how you get started. But it has to reach the stage when you embrace the god and then become the god. And that's where the real realisation happens and particularly with the goddesses because, as I say, they are the subconscious aspects and have the ability to bring other things into flower. So in Tibetan practice, but in, in, in the Western mysteries too, a woman can work with a god and become the god for the purposes of the, um, the goal of what the undertaking is. And so this has got nothing to do with, oh, this is my favourite god, or, you know, oh, I like this god. I think it's, 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 it is truly the science of the mysteries of, it's done by knowing what result you want. And once you know what the result is, then you define which deity, which goddess you become. And the idea, of course, is that, as it's said, you know, all goddesses are one god, all gods are one god, and there is one initiator. Initiator here mean, is a pun, it's meaning the word is to begin, to initiate, is to begin. So in other words, all the powers represented by the goddesses and all the powers represented by the gods in trained, skillful hands, can initiate growths in superconsciousness, in enlightenment, in magical ability, and in the capacity to serve others. <clears throat>